Welcome everyone. Today's webinar is information about the CPUC funding. Uh, my name is Cami Griffiths and I am joined by my two co-workers, Sabrina Tam and Sky Downey. We're going to do intros in a quick minute, but first I want to say a little bit about Community Tech Network. We were established as a nonprofit in 2008. We have been focused on transforming More lives through digital equity. And we do so through providing basic and intermediate level digital literacy training for low income adults of all ages. And you can see by this map, we have volunteers all over the country. We have the states that are outlined in blue are where we have current partnerships. What we also do is create curriculum and off offer training for trainers, which we're gonna talk a lot more about that in a few minutes. And all of our work happens through partnerships with nonprofits and government agencies. So this work that we do to close the digital divide is always done with people like yourselves. And we have about 50 agencies that we partner with currently across, across the country. So with that quick intro about Community Tech Network, I'm Cami Griffiths. I'm the executive director and co-founder. Very excited to be here and to share information about the CPUC funding and um, and the uh, what, what we can do to help. But I've been doing digital inclusion work since 2003 as an instructor for the Parks Department in New York City. So I've been doing this work for a very, very long time. Um, but I was also had the uh, privilege of working for uh, TechSoup, which is a nonprofit that helps other nonprofits with their technology. So this is an area that uh, I've been involved in for quite some time and really uh, pleased to see this funding that's being made available that will essentially allow your agencies uh, the kind of resources that you need to do the work to get people connected in your community. So I'm going to ask Sabrina to do her quick intro and then Sky. Sabrina. Thank you, Kenny. And hi, everyone. I'm Sabrina Tam. I'm the Senior Program Manager at CTN. And similar to Kami, I also started as an instructor. I started with CTN six years ago, six, seven years ago. And I love teaching and still do, even I'm a program manager mm -hmm. now. Um, so, and I manage most of the CPUC programs um, that we, the work that we do with our partners here mm -hmm. at CTN. So um, that's me. I now pass it to Sky. Thank you, Sabrina. Hello, everyone. I am Sky Downing. I am the Programs and Partnership Director for Community Tech Network. Um, I have worked in nonprofit for over 20 years, specifically in adult education and community-based programming. Uh, for 10 plus years. Uh, very happy to be here with you today. I oversee the capacity building uh, sector of the work that we do here at um, Community Tech Network, and that is the Digital Lift Train the Trainer programming that we'll be talking to you about later in this call. Great. Thanks, Guy. So our agenda today is to start by talking about the CPC grant program and application, and then Sky will talk about our capacity building program We'll open it up for Q&A and then talk about next steps. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Sabrina. Okay, thanks again, Cami. Um, so um, this CPUC programs um, has been around for, I think, around 10, almost 10 years. Um, and they provide different help or access um, to help people get the access to the internet and device and training. They have actually multiple um, accounts um, and we will provide, I think we'll share this slide, uh, slide deck after which you can click on um, the links here for the specific funding and the specific accounts to get more information. So I'm here just to give you an overview because there's a lot more um, to, re go, uh, to review. Um, so the one, accounts that CDN have been involved in most is the broadband adoption account, which provide um, SS device and training to um, all the learners. In the fiscal year 2022 to 23, there is $20 million for the funding. And last time I checked, um, they almost used that up. So they're planning to propose um, another for the next fiscal year, 23 to 24, another $20 million um, for um, the public to apply. Um, they have a semi-annual application cycles. The ones coming up is July 1st 
2023, so um, a little bit more than a month. Um, so hopefully most of the, the, the partners here will be able to submit one by that deadline. If you work closely, I think we can still get it done. Um, if not, there's always the next cycle, January 1st and so forth. Next slide, please. So a little bit more about this um, broadband adoption account. There are a few project types that are eligible for the funding. Um, they have broadband access, or they call it BA, call center, CC, and digital literacy, which um, CTN is you know, most uh, familiar with, uh, experienced with. And a digital literacy training program, they are required eight hours. So every learner have to um, receive at least eight hours of training in order to consider a complete or a graduate. But it can be done in groups, one-on-one -on -one or self-paced module. For example, if you have like um, a video uh, created and people can um, uh, watch it on their own, it consider training also or any combination. So it can be a combination of group classes, one-on-one -on -one training and self-paced. And then there's a way for you to keep track of eight hours. And then we consider that learner a complete a graduate. Okay. Um, and the target um, audience usually is the low income communities, senior, like older adults, um, and also communities facing socioeconomical barriers to broadband adoption. So a lot of them can be immigrants or monolingual um, population. Next slide. Okay, so if you do part, uh, partner with CTN, we will definitely help you develop a budget and uh, the application. But here's just some key points for you to um, consider or keep in mind when you um, think about the, the, the cost for the budget. Um, so CPUC maximum, they will, in maximum, they will um, sponsor $30, I mean, not $30, $300 for the device. Is this to take home device? Uh, so which the learner, if they complete the eight hours, they will be eligible to keep the device. Um, maximum 300 um, for the 40,000 per project. Um, in terms of household, they can have two per devices per household. Let's say a husband and wife taking the classes together, each of them can be eligible for a device. Um, they have to be a low income participant. Um, they have a number of programs that um, to to uh to make them qualify in terms of the low income care, ACP, SNAP, SSI, just to name a few, they have a long list of programs. So um, you, if you go to the CPUC CSF website, you get more information there. And the most important thing is smartphone is not an eligible device. They have to be an iPad or tablet or Chromebook or laptops. No smartphones is sponsored. For in-home devices, um, so if you are thinking of creating a computer lab or updating your computer lab, that's also um, uh, eligible uh, line item for the program, but the, the maximum is $700, $750 each device and um, $11,250 per project. So software is considered a separate expense. Okay, that is for other devices. The program also sponsor um, program implementation, meaning like instruction time, the curriculum development, outreach, and some of the administrative cost. Um, the maximum here is the 477 per participant. Um, that is for an expedited review. If you have, if the program implementation cost per learner is higher than that, you can still submit the proposal, but it would just go through a longer review process. So most of the project that CTN involved in is 477 or below, okay? And then there's a limitation for the administration cost for to get reimbursed that is up to 15%. So CPUC will only reimburse up to 50% of the program cost um, as for administrative support. So if you look at on the right, is that the program cost, total program cost, 85% is CPUC funded or sponsored. And then um, at least 50% will be self-funded or from other sources. We call them a match. 
So um, they will find all these components on the left-hand side, the device and program implementation, but up to 85% of the program cost. Um, another other um, criteria for the expedited review is that for that program, um, if it is under uh, uh, $150,000, it will qualify for the expedited review. If it is over, then it will just take longer for them to review. Okay, and another limitation is that transportation, the mileage expense is up to 10% of the grant amount. So that is just a key highlight of the budget consideration. We can talk more in, you know, um, about it when, we, um, when, when you decide to work with CTN and we work closely for the application. Okay, thank you. Um, more um, requirement for the expedited review. First one I just mentioned, $150,000 for, uh, for the grant. And your nonprofit organization has to exist for more than a year. And then you will have at least one year experience, at least one project that you have done in the past is for digital literacy. Um, but if you don't, if you just say partner with CTN, that will make you qualify for that as well. Um, the application has a designated person or in-person or virtual space for the training already. Um, and then the per, per participant cost is 477. That is excluding the device. Okay. And um, I think the other two is not relevant if you're not going for the broadband access or call center. Just for the top part is for digital literacy program. Um, and of course, you need to meet all the requirements. Um, for the application. And you can see the long list of requirements um, at the website. What I listed here today is just the highlights of those. Thank you. Project timeline. Okay, if we're going to meet the July 1st application um, deadline, usually it will take them a, couple, a few months to review and we normally will hear about the notification um, by Q4. October timeframe, and then you can have a month to decide whether you want to take on the funding or not. Um, if you do, then you will go into the ramp up phase. The ramp up phase is six months, up to six months. So um, the ramp up, you can use the ramp, ramp up time to develop the curriculum, to um, uh, acquire uh, all the devices that you will be giving out or um, creating the computer lab or um, classroom, um, work out like a contract or um, agreement with, with your partner, like CTN, um, et cetera. Or outreach also is in, with, with the ramp up period. And then by Q2, um, then you will have to submit uh, a ramp up report to CPUC to get your um, reimbursement and to report back how the ramp period went. Um, and then you should receive the reimbursement in one to two months. After the ramp period, you will have up to two years for the program delivery or program implementation. That will be the training that you do to, for your um, clients or your um, learners. Um, by the end of year one, a progress report is due and you can also submit another request for reimbursement and at that time. And usually again, you will get the reimbursement in one to two months. And then you'll go into the year one, a year two um, program delivery. And then at the end of year two, another report, another chance to submit reimbursement request. Um, so you see that you will have three chances to submit a request for reimbursement, the, any expenses incurred um, during those period, you have to wait until um, there's time for you to submit the reimbursement. And the last bullet point here at, on the slide, performance-based reimbursement. So other than the device's cost, which depends on how many you, you purchase, then you will get those fully reimbursed. Um, but for the implementation, um, it will based on how many learners got com uh, completed the eight hours. Let's say the program um, approved you to train 100 learners 
at this amount if you only able to train um 50 percent of that you will get 50 percent reimbursed for the what's the cost for the program Im implementation i think that's all the important consideration when you think about um, the budget or how you design the program and the project timeline. Thank you, Sabrina. So let's pause there for a minute and see if anybody mm -hmm. has any questions specifically about this part before we move on to talking about our digital lift program. So are there any questions? You can raise your hand. Uh, Gianni. Uh, thank you for this. I so appreciate this program. This is St. Mary's Center. We have a we connect program here. Um, I'm not quite sure how many participants are. Do we go for for the 150 grant? Is there a number that we have a target number? I do. Um, I can do a quick calculation. So it depends on um, uh, how many devices and things like that you you want to go for but with that amount you can get quite a bit of learners actually and yeah and it, it let's see three three hundred dollars per device would mean that mm -hmm. we'd have to come up with the rest yes yeah, we have so it would be Mm -hmm. So it would probably, because we can't add more, we can't double up, right? So that would that be will, that would be about two hundred learners. Two hundred learners in two years. Okay. Yes. And you can submit separate applications for separate locations. If you have multiple exactly. sites, then you can submit an application for each site separately. Or is it recommended that they put those together, Sabrina? It depends on the situation. So like if you go, if you think that you do combine all of them, you will go over the 150, then you can split them up. Um, but if you think that you'll be under, even if you combine every all the locations, it will be easier if you have just one for all the sites because only one reporting for one program. Whereas if you apply for separate location, you will have to do the reporting reimbursement for each location separately. But we could we could ask for less. Like we don't have to ask for the whole hundred. Oh yeah, we can yeah. ask for less. Thank you. Any other questions for Sabrina? Okay. Thank you, Sabrina. So she's going to be here to answer questions at the end. If there are more, please put those in the chat if you'd like. With that, I'd like to pass it over. There to were Sarah. a couple of questions from Bob. Oh, are sorry, all seniors? I'm sorry. Go ahead and read those questions. Are all seniors eligible, or only low-income seniors? And okay. eight hours of training per participant over what period of time? Okay. Um. So all seniors, regardless of income, are eligible for the training, but in order for them to receive the take home device, they have to be low income. Mm -hmm. We have some um, partners who um, have a mix of learners. They have some low income that are some are not. So for those that are eligible to uh, through the CPUC grant, they get one from CPUC grant. For those that are not, they either fundraise um, or they will have the, the device that they allow them to take home, it have to be from a different different funding source. And then the secondary question about the duration of time mm. at those eight hours. Mm -hmm. It can be the two years, they, up to two years, yeah. Got it, and Bab, you had your hand up and then down again. Did you have a question? You answered them, thank you. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Great. Great Thank questions. You. Great question. So uh, Sky, take it away. Sure thing. Thank you, Sabrina, for all of that valuable information. And thank you, Lauren, for helping to field questions as well. Um, so in order to best assist you with your potential training needs for the CPUC program, we would like to inform you of our available digital lift training tools. Uh, 
And what is Digital Lift is the big question. Uh, Digital Lift is a capacity building training program developed by us, Community Tech Network, which provides nonprofit partners, government entities, social service agencies, um, healthcare providers, and corporations with the knowledge, training, and support needed to develop, integrate, and sustain successful digital literacy programming inside of your daily service delivery. Um, we offer train the trainer instruction, uh, which includes adult learning and training techniques and customized curriculum to meet your clients needs. Uh, we offer program development and oversight, um, we, uh, including client intake needs assessment forms, data analysis, evaluation tools, uh, low cost internet connectivity, access and, and um, access to resources in your area. So regional resources that are actually useful to you. Um, device will will guide you on device acquisition and distribution. Um, as I indicated, we do have model curricula available as well in multiple languages created for Windows 10 devices, Chromebook, Android, and iOS. And we also provide um, support, additional support, uh, offering those regionally relevant resources and full wraparound support services from our experienced uh, team for the duration of our contracted time together. Next slide, please. So CTN transforms lives through digital literacy, and we do so through the provision of direct services or basic digital skills training provided in person, virtually, or in a hybrid learning environment, and also through the provision of the digital lift capacity building training. Uh, we'd like to share with you a little bit about how um, our inaugural year went. So we have been involved in capacity building efforts um, all along the way in our 15 years of existence, uh, but most recently actually launched the, um, the digital lift programming uh, to really focus and hone in on these capacity building or train the trainer efforts. Uh, so in our inaugural year, which, which uh, was last year, 2022, uh, we developed, implemented, and managed uh, two significant digital lift pilot programs in rural Texas counties and also in Santa Clara County. Uh, we developed a diagnostic assessment tool that is specific to the lift uh, training toolkit so that we can actually dial down with you and um, understand what your agency's most critical needs are and address those with you um, in, in a pertinent manner and order. Uh, we created accessible multilingual curriculum, as you heard me say earlier, and we have delivered capacity building training for trainers uh, developed to meet our partner agency's unique needs. We've worked in partnership with um, nonprofits uh, such as yourselves and agencies such as yourselves. And we, we were able to serve to date. Uh, we've been able to serve 16 agencies in New York, New Jersey, California, and Texas, providing training to 157 agency leaders. Next slide, please. So our digital lift training toolkit currently consists of six training programs, which are geared to meet your agency's capacity building needs. All of the trainings are developed to produce knowledgeable and competent trainers, whether they're focused on digital navigation, classroom training, or one-on-one -on -one digital support sessions provided in person, virtually, or in a hybrid learning environment. The training timelines are determined by your agency leaders and our digital lift training team. And all trainings are attended uh, by the learners asynchronously uh, by your chosen staff or volunteers. Learners are given two to three weeks with the uh, content. And then the entire group is scheduled for a live virtual workshop and debrief where we review the practical application of the content, answer any of your lingering questions and discuss real world training scenarios with you. Additionally, all trainers are enrolled in a community forum where they can continue their learning and conversations with fellow trainers nationwide. Uh, these communities are newly developed, of course, and ever evolving, which is very exciting, and are facilitated by our staff um, who are subject matter experts and remain at the ready to answer any questions, solve any riddles, and post updated content and any pertinent news. Um, 
I will add too that we do keep our content up to date uh, so that you have the latest information and you have access to that training content um, uh, so that you, you never fall behind in your learning. Uh, there are three programs of the six lift training programs that I'd like to focus on with you today and just dive a little bit deeper into what they um, are comprised of. And uh, that is our lift trainers program, our lift navigators program and lift ACP. Uh, we can dial in a little bit deeper with uh, several other programs that are more uh, focused dependent upon what your agency's needs are, but these are the three programs that really um, will support you best in any CPUC training efforts. Um, Lift Trainers is five to eight hours of training, and it's, like we said, an asynchronous training program, which covers um, the an overview of the digital divide, adult learning principles, uh, basic training techniques, as well as shadowing videos, and there's a curriculum walkthrough. Um, it's designed to take two to three weeks, like we said, and um, will be followed up with that live workshop debrief at the conclusion of the training. Lift Navigators is 12 to 15 hours of training. This is our most robust training um, in that the Navigators are trained to assist people one on one with you know in any type of you know any member of the community on any type of device um one on one in person uh virtually or potentially even in a classroom setting as well or a group setting so lift navigators very robust training it contains um the adult learning principles uh uh, segment. It contains an ACP overview. So it's got a lot of good content in there. Uh, we also, uh, there are two parts, digital navigators overview, as well as advanced digital navigators training. And then we throw in the shadowing videos. And like I said, the ACP overview as well. So there's just a lot packed into this training, 12 to 15 hours, two to three weeks again, um, with the content and then the uh, workshop and debrief. Lift ACP is specific to the Affordable Connectivity Program. Uh, for those of you, uh, um, I believe most of us are familiar at this point with the ACP, but just in case we have anyone who's new to it on the call, um, ACP, Affordable Connectivity Program, is uh, put on by the FCC. It's a, a government subsidy that is being um, uh, delivered at this time. It, projections say you know five years for the funding to be available uh we see probably that'll be more like <laughs> three to four um maybe but basically it's 30 dollars subsidy um off of discounted or eligible excuse me eligible uh internet plans um for your clients and um consists of, uh, well, most major ISPs are providing, in, or providing, excuse me, participating in the program and um, and qualified families can, can obtain that $30 subsidy per month until the funding runs out. So it is um, one other resource. We, we have additional resources. We know this. Um, there are other discount programs. There are other uh, things available, but this is one additional resource that is available to us right now for getting people connected on the internet. Um, so the Lift ACP program consists of an overview and then an ACP advanced enrollment specialist training. And that training um, basically provides um, information on all things affordable connectivity program related, eligibility criteria, application process. Uh, it, we outline the non-standard scenarios that you might run into, and we offer tips and tricks for overcoming any application or enrollment challenges, of which there have been many, but the FCC is uh, constantly working on uh, uh, improving the application process, and they most recently made some some changes to the actual enrollment um, application and, and it is much, the process is much smoother now. Um, but the tra this training is designed uh, 
to take about three to six hours of time, again, over the two to three week time span and followed up with that live workshop debrief with us at the conclusion. Next slide, please. So you heard me mention uh, the library of multilingual curriculum, which we offer. Um, this curriculum covers a wide variety of pertinent subject matter over a multitude of devices. Um, we certainly don't expect you to read this tiny print or memorize this list here, uh, but this just gives you an idea. And we do work with every one of our partners individually to meet any and all customized curricular needs, taking into account uh, the training environment that you'll be working in, your target audience, the subject matter that you wish to cover, and the skill level that you will be uh, training to or presenting training to. Um, many of our curriculum are accompanied by trainer guides uh, to assist your trainers in the process and additional handouts as well um, as additional resource to you. Next slide, please. So we wanted to talk a little bit about some of our partners and we have um, uh, split them up into categories to make it a little bit uh, um, uh, more, more tangible, I guess, um, or, or digestible. Uh, we have uh, um, enjoyed countywide partnerships with both uh, San Mateo County and Sonoma currently. Um, as well as the county of, of, well, Travis County here in Texas, where I am located. Um, with San Mateo and Sonoma, we have enjoyed a really beautiful um, uh, hybrid relationship where uh, we are providing a combination of direct services and capacity building services, as well as curricular resources. So that full wraparound support, a very holistic approach to capacity building. Um, and also assisting your agencies in providing the training boots on the ground. Next slide, please. Uh, we have worked with senior serving agencies specifically. So Little Brothers, Friends of the Elderly is a longstanding partner in San Francisco area. Um, we've provided curriculum specific to certain devices, um, customized to them. Um, Age of Central Texas, we actually uh, uh, provided both curriculum and train the trainer training, as well as um, enabling them to kind of expand on our programming here in Texas and work with, uh, you know, be the direct service provider boots on the ground here in Austin uh, with, with seniors. Um, Vivalon is a partnership in Marin County. Uh, and uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Cami, but uh, I believe this is another uh, countywide ATT um, access to technology funding opportunity uh, that Vivalon is uh, the lead partner on and then hired us on as a consultant to provide, again, train the trainer training. Um, we are doing the lift navigators training with them and uh, providing curricular resources as well as. Um, uh, some direct service provision here as well. Uh, SourceWise, we have had uh, multiple partnerships with the folks at SourceWise and really enjoy working with them. Again, another longstanding relationship. Um, and, and once again, we're talking uh, training of trainers, uh, direct service provision, uh, device acquisition, assisting with that as well, um, and curricular resources here. So fine examples of, <laughs> of how this uh, this partnership can work. Um, in the public sector, we have worked with uh, multiple libraries. We have worked with the Texas Association of Regional Counties, whose membership consists of the triple A's. Um, uh, we enjoy our library and, and also city uh, connections. Again, th these, uh, well, these folks actually went through our um, trainer basics. So the Lyft Trainers uh, Program, and then received multilingual curriculum on multiple devices. And next slide, final slide for me, our social service partners. Uh, we have worked with El Buen Samaritano here in Austin, Texas, a very small but mighty uh, social service provider. 
and also Goodwill of Central Texas, a bit larger in size, but similar work. Um, with El Buen, they have a 10-person uh, computer lab, public access computer lab, which had been shut down throughout pandemic. So they were trying to recover post-pandemic. Uh, they took um, put their trainers through our um, classroom training. So basic, basic uh, lift, excuse me, lift trainers, uh, basic training, and then um, contracted with us to achieve um, uh, curriculum in both Spanish and in English for, for classroom setting. Um, Goodwill of Central Texas, we partnered with them on ACP um, uh, enrollment specialist training, as well as uh, planning an enrollment event during Digital Inclusion Week. Uh, we were ab able to successfully train 24 enrollment specialists um, with that partnership. So we're pretty proud of that. And then um, we've also worked with ECS, um, a CPUC partner, uh, in providing curricular resources as well. That is it for me. Any questions in regards to Digital Lift? I've answered a few in the chat, so I will Excellent. read those out. So in case folks don't want to deal with that. So one question had to do whether or not the diagnostic assessment tool was in English. Um, <clears throat> so I said that it is, uh, or if it was in uh, what languages is the diagnostic tool. And I said, it's only in English, but that we have needs assessments that are geared to the learners that are in English, Spanish, and Chinese. So Sabrina, if, I, if there are additional languages available, please let me know. Um, <clears throat> so that was one of the questions. The diagnostic tool is specifically to help your agent help us understand where your agency is at in its training needs for implementing digital inclusion programming. The second question had to do with if the training is um, is virtual. So our training of trainers is all virtual. It's in an asynchronous learning management system. If you want to deliver training to your learners we would be able to coach you on how to provide that in in-person or virtually. So we have curriculum for both and we can, as Sky mentioned, train you on classroom setting or virtual setting. And then the last question had to do with pricing and it, we find it best to just talk to you and understand your needs and then come up with a price point for you then. So if you're interested in talking with us, uh, then just uh, we'll follow up with you or I have a slide, the next slide will have our contact information. Um, so with that, any other questions that any folks raising hands? Anybody want to ask Sky questions specifically about our digital lift program? Great. So what we can do at this point, we are done with our presentation. We appreciate your time today and your interest in our work. If you are interested in working with us, you could put your email in the chat and we can follow up with you. You could fill out the form. So Jess, if you could pop that in the chat. Um, this form will go, it's like a, it's a, it's a lead form for us and then we can get your contact information, but also it asks a few questions that will help us um, kind of determine what your needs are and we'll follow up with you then. Or you yeah. can just go ahead and email us. Yes, Lauren. Pardon me, sorry, um, Steve Lustig has a question. Yes, Steve. Who in Sonoma County, what agency are you working with in California in Sonoma County? That is an excellent question. I know West County Senior Center. Okay. Yeah, Se Senior Coast Ciders is one of them. Puente oh, is Sonoma. another. Sorry, San Mateo. Those are San Mateo. Oh, I'm sorry. You said Sonoma. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't have the answer to that. Carrie, it's locked <laughs> up in Carrie's brain. <laughs> well, yeah, it's um there's the we're we're reaching out to all the senior centers. Not all of them want to go through the training for trainers. Um the challenge, of course, which you, you may be thinking, like, great idea, but I don't have anyone to be trained. The benefit is this program will pay for you to hire someone. Of course, that adds the layer of administration and finding the person and managing them. And we get that it's all not easy, but the benefit to you is then if you could 
get something started through this funding and show the impact that you're making to your funders, to the county, you know, and there's going to be money coming from the federal government to the states sometime next year for this work, we feel confident that more funding will come to sustain this over time. So it's really in your best interest. If your agency thinks that digital inclusion or digital equity is a priority, now is the time to find the right person on your staff, a volunteer, somebody in the community who can be trained as a digital navigator to do this work and then potentially sustain it over time. I know that there are several other agencies in Sonoma. I don't have the names off the okay. top. I have, the, I have some of them. Oh. It's Silvercrest, Cloverdale, Sonoma Area Agency on Aging, West County Services, Sebastopol Area Senior Center, Vintage House, Petaluma People Services, and a couple more. Okay, thank you. And I would like to add to on the on the capacity um, end of things, when we first partnered with San Mateo and Sonoma, both had concerns about that very thing. Well, we're a very small agency. We don't have anyone to put through the training. We can't afford to have them put, use their time in that way, um, that kind of thing. And we did an info session. We held an info session with the partner agency leaders, really dove into what the programming uh, provides. And, and we ended up, the goal was to, well, so for San Mateo specifically, the goal was to register five uh, enrollees and we ended up with 24. So uh, there was a very good outcome. And, and in addition to that, several of those enrollees actually um, opted to take additional training. So they, they did the Lyft Navigators program, which included the ACP overview. And several of those learners said, please, oh, please, can we have access to the enrollment specialist training? And, and we, we definitely gave them that access. So um, so lots of great outcomes out of that. So we, we understand that it um, feels very hard at first, but if we can just, um, if we can just get the ball rolling, <laughs> we promise to give you everything you need to, to be successful and to be able to sustain the programming. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Steve. Any other questions? Well, we appreciate your time today. What you can expect from us is a follow-up email with a link to the recording and this PowerPoint deck. And then if you're interested in learning more, just fill out that form or send us an email. And I know we had one person submit their email through the chat, so we'll follow up with you. And with that, there are no other comments. I wanna thank my co-presenters, as well as uh, Jess and Lauren on the back end to make everything work. And I hope that we get to work together with you guys. Please let us know if you have any questions. Thank you so much. Have a great day.